It is exciting to see the excitement in youth talking about what robotics can do to the world and how the world is changing. I was asked to talk about my work and how technology is developing. So let's get started. I am the director of Nebula Robotics, a company that makes robotic arms. So the story behind Nebula Robotics. Nebula Robotics is the result of focused innovation targeted primarily at micro, small and medium enterprises while being relevant to large manufacturing industries as well. Our robots have taken a quantum leap and would revolutionize industrial manufacturing in India. We call it a robotic evolution and we welcome you to join. The robotic evolution, like the industrial revolution, is aiming to change the manufacturing scenario. Our robots are designed to address the pain points of industrial users, a point that is easy to use, reliable and easy to maintain with an objective to take away dull, dangerous and dirty work from people so that they can concentrate on higher level work. We have made our robots so user friendly that anyone without any previous robotic experience can effectively operate it. A majority of Indian MSMEs are yet to realize the advantages of using an industrial robot. Their view that robots are for big companies has to change. Our effort is to change the manufacturing ecosystem so that not only large but also micro industries can operate. Looking forward, we believe that success is not an end argument. It has to be an earned every day through consistent passion, dedication and hard work. And we will continue to develop and leverage innovative technologies with breakthrough ideas to stay future ready and to achieve market leadership. Interestingly enough, it's not the first time in the world where we have new technology, which has huge benefits but also potential hazards. When cars were introduced in England in 1862, there was a law stating that you had to walk in front of the car with a red flag warning pedestrians, there's a car coming. This kind of approach takes away all the benefits of technology. At the same time, it may, might be necessary to gain acceptance of technology because if these first cars kill people, we wouldn't be riding around in cars. So. This ongoing battle between acceptance of society and harvesting the benefits of technology. So let me get into how our robots are changing the world to some degree. There's always been a relationship between man and technology. I would argue, what is being human is to use technology. This is what makes us different from animals. And in all of these, we view human evolution. Technology here is the iPhone and the iPad and these have been an integral part of evolution of humanity. I have given a detailed talk about how art has inspired technology and you can view the video later on the link shown here. So at the same time, we have used technology to represent art ourselves. So here is an example of a painting on a cape, which is basically our desire to understand ourselves through technology. Doing our work more efficiently with technology has always been the way, be it the fire, the wheel, all of these technologies which augment people and allow people to do more with our energy and our work. So robotics started with art. It was Da Vinci's experiment with mechanical statues, moving to industrial robots in the 1960s. So the robotics started with art but ended up as an industrial equipment. I'll just briefly touch on Industry 4.0. Industry 1.0 was the industrial revolution. The steam engines were replaced, animals and humans, rise of Europe, the rise of machine age. So the first and second happened between 100 years. Industry 2.0 was the electrification and assembly line of Henry Ford. Till then, people walked around fitting components and everything else. Now, an assembly line was brought where the assembly line was moving and people stood still. And you got the parts and you put it and you became a widget. This dramatically increased the productivity. It also expanded the supply chain because you had sub assemblies and assemblies coming all over the place. This happened again within around 100 years of the third one. Industry 3.0 was the CNC and PLC machines where you had this machine which was automated to a great extent and the machine would work by themselves with the human controller. The machine followed the path and it executed it. This happened around 49 years. In industry 4.0, the entire floor is getting automated. 
where you have robots doing the work on the shop floor connected to the internet and the robots make sure everything happens on point. The welding and paint shops work in an automobile factory and then the entire dealer network, supplier network is connected by IoT and ERP. That means the front end and the back end. The front end being the sales and the entire production is being updated depending on the sales forecast. For example, if you go to BMW's site, there is an option where you can customize cars that is fed into the production line that makes sure your smaller bespoke batches depend on data so that you can have smaller runs and flexible output dramatically changing just in time manufacturing to do that. In the back end, you have a series of sensors in the manufacturing plan to make sure that the parts come on time. The parts go on time and the quality is maintained. So what you see is a level of automation that has gone maybe 5x with robotics, AI, predictive analysis, right from the consumer. If you want a prime example, look at Tesla. The entire factory floor is robotic. Sales is direct and the car is gone to be a piece of software. So the data about the car and the use of car comes to Tesla every day. And now you know where the car is, how the car is running for every single car. And in case of a crisis, you can find a software patch and change the configuration of the car. Industry 4.0 is automation to an extreme chain in the supply chain, in surrounding systems and in the heart of manufacturing plants. So if we look at whichever country participated early in the industrial revolution, they have become the world leader. So if India has this dream of becoming the leader, the third largest economy, then India has no option but to not only participate but be the front runner of the industrial revolution. The thing about industry 4.0 is that you need an economy which is not demand constrained. India is not demand constrained. We now have a national market because of GST. Our cost of logistics has fallen from 14% to 6 to 7% because you have a national market. Then we have the IT skill and technology skill in abundance and technology to automate and get into robotics and do everything else. Next, for robotics, we need to get those devices. The cost of manufacturing has to come down so dramatically low that China can supply for us for the rest of the world because we don't have to manufacture because the cost has come down and we can do some of the more sophisticated software settings. For example, the embedding of chips. The embedding of the design has become very expensive. The chips have become very low cost. So we can do the design. Now in industry 4.0, there will be a distributed manufacturing. Industry 3.0 was centralized manufacturing. Like I said, 3D printing. Let's say, I want a car, so I go to a designer in Mumbai who designs a car in 3D for me, the way I want. All right. And then I go to my neighboring shop, which is next door to me. He's got a 3D printing machine. He'll print out the entire car for me. So you can have a distributed network all over the country where metal powder can come and this can be used so we have the design. So now we have to rethink. We have to do it massively. Till now, India had a disadvantage so far in manufacturing because we are not part of the global supply chain. Now the global supply chain is getting disrupted because it is getting very expensive and you can have direct selling B2C immediately bespoke in moments notice instead of long chains. The way how India has moved during COVID is a big example of that. Another real life example, a three year old company was competing on a defense manufacturing global tender in which it is competing against American, European, Korean and Israeli firms and the youngest of which was 20 years into the system manufacturing. The tender was once the system was deployed, the bid was being evaluated on the life cycle cost. This Indian firm went and said, instead of supplying spares, we'll supply you a 3D printer, which can be deployed on the field. You know what was the life cycle cost differential when the bids were opened? It was 60%. The Indian firms were cheaper by 60%. So despite having an age disadvantage of 15 years, despite having very little credentials to prove it, it was still able to win the global tender. And this also proves one more point. In this automation business, 10 years back, when you went to a supply chain guy, he said, listen, quality is given, let's talk about price. Today they say, automation is given. It's let's talk about price. So we know for a fact that the world is shifting to modern manufacturing. 
we can also see that the driver behind this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's no more about having a dry place to sleep in the winter or getting enough food. It's really about self-realization and getting new exciting experiences. And this is where humanity is moving because of this technology. So the point is, we are not losing our jobs to robots. It's a big scare that happens. We always use technology to take us to the next level. What we can do with robots is spark human creativity by allowing people to express more what they want to be known for. This is also what we see with our robots. It is a tool to help people get more work done efficiently. And we can see from various studies this combination of man and machines. This is most probably in robotics but also in other areas. If you combine humans and machines, you get some significant value there. There are four or five aspects of industrial revolution, whether it is capital formation, whether it is technology disruption, research, whether it is government policies and creating the infrastructure. We are doing a pretty great job. And there are a number of examples in each one of them. And then, of course, there's a lot more to be done. But we are at least in the right direction. But there is one thing which disturbs me. And the reason for that anxiety is if you look at the Indian demographics, we have a huge amount of young people. But if you analyze the population a little deeper, the number of engineers who are coming up, are these graduates hireable? More often than not, they are not hireable. So why they are getting a degree, but the education or degree they are getting, is, is it useful for industry as of now, let alone for industry 4.0? Secondly, if you look at the workforce, less than 5% of the Indian workforce is skilled labor. While if you look at the Korean, which is at the other extreme, at about 96%, or even China, which is at 24%. So this is one area while we are working on it, we cannot afford to spend 10 years on that. We need to get that right. I mean, whether it is online training or this mass open source, which is available, that is one area where we need this. And this needs to be a little faster than it is today. I have two initiatives I would like to share with you. We're doing two things to accelerate this. One thing is we are creating a robotic platform. Basically, we are opening up our platform so people can experiment with our various solutions online and figure out their use cases. Also, so that other people can add technology to it. This essentially allows small freelancers and small businesses to contribute to our ecosystem and create added value per se. This is also lowers the technology barriers for our end customers. Another activity we are doing is our academy where we are planning to do training on our robots and taking an exam and they get a certificate. What it does is it takes people from working like robots and instead become robot programmers. At the end, I would like to share a few applications that I've not seen commonly and some of these things are things that I couldn't even imagine few years back. Firstly, robots at the Olympics where robots are used to record the track and field stadiums and also the swimming stadiums. We've also started to see robotic surgeries, physiotherapy and ultrasonic therapy and massages, rehabilitation, TV studios using robots for special effects as our cams, robots coming into construction sites, robot kitchens where you can text your kitchen on the way home from work and this robot will start cooking for you in the way the best chefs cook and these are not ideas these are already being rolled out by companies robots landing a plane as a co-pilot robots being prepared to build our houses on mars robots being used for building robots we are currently preparing our plans to start manufacturing robots themselves robots being used in lights out factories where robots work continuously without human intervention for 72 hours to one week. It's not man against machines or man or machine, but basically this combination of man and machine. Before I hand over this session, we are shaping Nebula as a technology leader for digital industries and for your partner of choice to get the benefits of digital industrialization. We are ready to work with you, but we also know that especially in the next phase where collaboration, skill development, and jointly working will make a difference. I look forward to writing the future together with all of you.